Well, good morning on this bright, sunny morning. It's fantastic to be awake and enjoying God's blessings. And so let me uh, read to us the blessing of his word. I'll uh, start at verse 3 of Colossians chapter 1. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people, the faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, the sunshine reminds us uh, of your glory and of your love for us. And thank you for what we can now experience of your glory and your love in your word. Please be uh, opening our minds and our hearts to receive uh, you uh, as you speak to us, that we might know you better uh, and love you more. For Jesus' name's sake. Amen. Well, yesterday we looked at the first two of uh, what is sometimes called the Christian Trinity um, in uh, uh Verses uh, 3 and 4, thinking of faith and love. We all know those famous verses uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, let me remind us. And now these three remain, faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. Faith, hope and love, sometimes called the Christian trinity or the trinity of the Christian life uh, rather than the divine trinity. And Paul refers to them again here. But notice Yesterday we, we looked at faith and love. They come in a slightly different order. And today we see that that faith in Christ Jesus and that love uh, for our fellow Christians, uh, God's people, spring from the hope. Uh, love may be the greatest because it will endure forever. But there is a way in which hope is where they all begin. The faith and love spring uh, out of that hope that is stored up for us in heaven. So what is this hope um, of which Paul is talking? Well, this hope is what we have heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to us. Uh, if we are a Christian at some point, uh, someone told us of the Lord Jesus by some means, whether that was a family member, a friend, uh, maybe it was something we heard in church, maybe it was something we heard in a youth group, or maybe even in a talk on the internet uh, or something on the TV. But one way or another, the message, the true message of the gospel came to our ears. We'll see how that happened in Colossae um, tomorrow. Uh, but for us, uh, we can think back to how that happened. And when we heard that message, something happened deep inside of us in our hearts. Our hearts responded by seeing the hope that is there in the heart of the gospel message. A hope which is stored up for us in heaven. Because what is that hope? What is the Christian hope? Well, the Christian hope ultimately is Jesus. Our hope is all bound up in him, in his death and resurrection. Jesus is in heaven today. And our hope, our solid, firm hope, is that one day we will join him. One day we'll be with him. And that is guaranteed for us through all that he has done for us. The wonderful truth that whatever has happened to Jesus um, is happening and will happen to us too. That is why our hope is stored up in heaven. And that's really important because it means that it is, as it were, unchangeable, untouchable. Nothing can take that hope away from us in an objective sense. Subjectively, yes, our, our hope is challenged by all sorts of things, um, not least our present circumstances. But actually, nothing can change that hope because Jesus isn't going anywhere. If Jesus is our hope and he is the true hope, the message of the gospel is all about him, then no one and nothing can take that away from us. That is why our hope is stored up um, in heaven. As uh, Paul says um, elsewhere in one of his letters in Romans chapter 8 um, about that hope. For in this hope we are saved. Hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Hope is a future thing. We wait 
for the fullness of our hope. Yes, we know Jesus today. We know that he is with us, but we wait for the full experience of that hope. And one day we will be with him where he is, where we will see him face to face in glory. But the true message of the gospel is that that will one day happen to us. It is a hope in life, in death, and in eternity beyond death. And that is why our faith and love spring from that. If we have that sure and certain hope, then it will help us to walk by faith. When we don't see the reality of it yet, to keep trusting. And if we have that hope, then we will respond in love for one another as well, for those who share in that hope in particular. Because that hope is the most important thing to us. The hope is the thing that we have in common. Let me pray for us. So may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and faith and love as we trust in him, so that we may overflow with hope by the power of his Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, please would you be working that in us today. Would we be growing in our hope as we hear from you in all sorts of ways today and in the coming days. A hope in the face of coronavirus, a hope in the face of isolation, suffering and even death that will one day take us through to be face to face with you. And we pray it in Jesus' precious name. Amen.